Hey everyone, Michael here. Welcome back to another video. This video is part two of me trying to show a vacuum system that hopefully will work on the lathe. Now, the reason I say hopefully is because in part one, without going into too much history, you'll see that I used a previous vacuum pump from a CNC system, this big elaborate system trying to get it to work, and at the end of the day, that vacuum system did not work on my lathe. It was not pulling any vacuum. I do not know why. I'm still trying to figure that out. But in this video, I have figured it out. And so what I wanna do, the purpose for this one, is simply to show you the fittings and everything that I did to make this vacuum chucking system work. You'll see I'm just wearing a, uh, a Sunday sweatshirt, basically. Um, and so this is not a get dusty and dirty video, but I am gonna show you the entire setup and then show you the vacuum chuck working. So let's go ahead and show you what I've got here. And if you are looking to set up a system like this in the future, I can assure you it's very, very easy, relatively quick, and for a couple dollars you can change the whole game with your lathe setup. So if you're one of those people, this video is the video for you. Let's go ahead and take a look. First and foremost, we wanna look at what kind of motor and system I'm using as a vacuum. So here it is, this is a Robin Air. It is a two-stage vacuum pump. It does uh, use oil. I know that there is some debate out there between oil and oil less. The reason I chose this one is it's powerful. Um, it is a one horsepower and it draws eight CFM of vacuum. I've heard in some of the forums and some of the other videos I've watched that if you can pull four CFM, you can do pretty good. This thing on top is the exhaust port, and then there's your oil level reading on the side. Let's talk about this for a second. So I have the instructions here for this Robin Air vacuum pump, and if I can find the link for it, I will put the link down below, uh, and you can see about purchasing this yourself. Uh, if YouTube allows me to do that, I will get a share of those profits if you decide to buy this particular pump on that link. I don't know if that'll work or not. Uh, it's something YouTube started doing. Um, but in the instructions here, it says to maintain your vacuum pump for maximum performance, Robin Air recommends changing vacuum pump oil after each use. That seems crazy. <laughs> so, the reason these vacuum pumps exist is usually not to pull vacuum through a lathe. It's used to pull vacuum through a refrigerant system or something similar. And so I can see how if you're pulling refrigerant through the lines that you may want to change it after each use because obviously you are sucking all of that air and that refrigerant through the lines and that's probably diminishing uh, the ability for that oil to perform well in the pump. I don't see how in this system uh, you would want to change the oil after every single use. I mean, you could imagine you use it for a day, you turn a couple bowls on it maybe, or maybe just even one bowl, and then, oh, well, now I gotta change the oil. Uh, that seems a bit excessive. So in my mind, and again, you all can tell me what you think, to me this seems more like the kind of deal where you change it when it looks like it needs to be changed. If I'm totally wrong about that, then you all let me know, and I know that Anyone that stumbles upon this that knows anything about this is probably gonna say, well, this is why you should get an oil-less pump, but the oil one is fine with me, and I don't have an issue with changing oil if I have to. Um, and I think it's kinda like, as I've heard one guy say, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, I think both would be great. But this is kind of interesting to me that it says that you need to change your oil after every use. Um, so I think I'm gonna heed that one with caution, but more or less throw that instruction book away because I'm not dealing with refrigerant. At worst, I'm dealing with dust, and I wanna show you the fitting setup to show you how we're dealing with that as well, and then a couple more things that just sort of will sum up exactly how this system works. This is the setup with all of the fittings on it, what I finally ended up with at least. And again, you can buy for about $100, a whole deal that has the gauge and the fittings and everything for it. There's a couple suppliers that sell those sorts of things. Mine is kind of a mishmash of parts from different places. So my vacuum hose I got from my local hardware store. This is all quarter inch inner diameter, by the way. 
And then these fittings, all of the brass fittings I got from Harbor Freight, they sell packs that basically are hose repair kits and they're relatively cheap. That's where this valve came from. These fittings, uh, this fitting was separate from like a tractor supply buy, it was a coupling. These filters I was able to find on Amazon and you will see I'm double filtered, I'll tell you why in a second. And then the gauge I got from Amazon. Um, I wanted a nice big gauge where I could easily see what kind of pressure I'm pulling. The reason that I have two filters is because the vacuum is being pulled from this center all the way down to the pump. And this is pulling air in from this side and this is pulling air in from the vacuum chuck this side. Now if one thing is going to destroy the pump, it's going to be the sawdust, the, 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 the fine dust that can get into the system and I don't want any of that to be pulled in. So these are air water or air oil separators. Um, believe it or not, there was nowhere in my small town that sold inline filters like this. Um, I bought a pack of three on Amazon. I, ori I oriented them properly so that, you know, it's pulling the air in the right way. And one other difference here is you'll see I use T-fittings and then couple them together. Most of these kits you buy have a four-way block so that this would be centered and you wouldn't need the T-fittings, but I couldn't find for the life of me a, a four-way block that would allow me to do that. T-fittings, they work awesome. The other thing that I did, you can see that I have this start-stop switch. It's a very simple deal, it just plugs in and that just allows me, instead of having to bend over to the pump, I know, I know, uh, I can just start it right here. So I have my start stop and then I've also got on the side here you can see my on and off for the vacuum. And this is a product that is made by Robust. It's called a vacuum adapter. You can see that it has two sealed O-rings on it and it's got a fitting on the end right here that you have to provide for yourself. And I'll tell you the one thing I was kind of concerned about with this is the fact that you can see there's a double bearing in there, but it slides in and out really easy. Um, and I was concerned about the fact that I may have to put some sort of a sealant in there. But you're going to see in a minute that it is really no problem at all. I pull awesome vacuum with this thing. It rotates nice and free. Uh, seems to be an extremely well-made product. Now, there's a part of my conscience which says I still want to put some sealer in there. But you'll see, like I said, it works great. And the best part of it is, is how simple it is to use. It really just plugs in to the back of the hand wheel there. Those O-rings are so easily replaceable should they wear out. And so for right now, this is an excellent system, I feel, for going forward with my vacuum chucking needs. The last component is a vacuum chuck itself. This one is from Holdfast. I've had it for years. It worked pretty well with the Holdfast Venturi vacuum system um, until, of course, Time got the best of it, as it does with all of us. It's got a double O-ring on it there that really helps seal a bowl on well. And then we're going to need a bowl to put on there, which I happen to have right here. So let's go ahead and show you what kind of vacuum this system is pulling. I think you'll be pretty impressed with it. All right, let's turn her on. So you can see how already, and part of it, I think, is the filter restriction on the one end. It's already pulling around two. Let's go ahead and put a bowl on it. Let's flip it on and watch our gauge. You can see I haven't even turned it all the way on. We're already pulling at seven. Let's turn it on. And right now it's sitting at about 26. I was pulling 27 to 28 and it kind of goes back and forth depending of course on the temperature and things like that. A couple things you'll notice, one that pump gets a lot quieter when it's under full suction. This bowl is on here so tight there is no way, I mean I am, I'm a big dude, I'm, I'm, I'm well over 200 pounds, 6'3", and when I lean on this thing I can't even budge it. There is a lot of pressure holding this thing on. I'll just turn it on here for a second. You can see how lopsided it is. And it's still holding on there. It's spinning at 700 RPM, 710, which is more than you would normally even turn a bowl with. 
the bearing on the back I'll show you that real quick you should be able to see this the bearing is spinning nice and smooth you see the hose does not move at all everything is super quiet there it is 710 rpm And we're still pulling. Almost 27. So 30 is about a perfect vacuum. So as you can see, part two of the vacuum chuck system is a massive success. What you need is a real vacuum pump, it turns out. I don't know what was wrong with my other one. I'm still needing to investigate that. But I could not be more thrilled about this. I am pulling 27 to 28 uh, HG in vacuum. 30 is perfect. And so I really don't think you can do any better with wood than that. Um, you're never going to get a stronger vacuum. And that's the reason that I also went with a larger vacuum pump. I plan on turning some larger bowls with mine, uh, maybe making or getting some larger chucks in the future to hold those larger bowls. And this just worked out great. So if this is something that you want to do with your lathe or your system in the future, then this would be a good setup for you to do that with. The other advantage, of course, with vacuum is that once you have it, you can use it for so many other things. Vacuum forming bags for making radius and oddly shaped parts, uh, hold down fixtures, all sorts of things. Vacuum can replace a lot of clamps and a lot of other fixtures in your shop and make life a lot easier for you. And so those might be some things that you see me do in the future, uh, Lord willing. But I'm really happy with this. This worked out super great. It was a couple extra dollars, yeah, but at the, in the long run, it's gonna be super worth it. Guys, there's a lot going on in my life right now. If you have not went back and watched one of my previous videos explaining how I'm currently dealing with stage four metastatic cancer, please go back and watch that. One of the things that I want to do on my channel is try to encourage us all and walk us through in faith, even through adversity, even through difficult circumstances. And if that is something you would be interested in, there is going to be more content like that besides my woodworking content. I just think that when you look at life and you realize that it may not be as long as you thought, you want to pour out in different ways. And so I'm going to use my platform and my content here to try to help us walk through life in faith in that way and sort of help us all understand the process of what it looks like to deal with cancer. I know that's probably not something you expected at the end of this video if you just randomly popped on it, but you never know who you're reaching out there. So go ahead and watch that video. There will be a link to it that is popping up here right now and you can go ahead and click on that. And as always, if you subscribe, if you like this video, if you share this video, all of those things help me get more views, uh, get, get the word out there, help other people, and help other people through this life. And hopefully provide some content similar to this, like this, that might help you in your woodworking or whatever journey that you're on. Guys, we appreciate you all, love you all, God bless you all, and until next time, take care of yourselves out there.